<laughs> did, did you end up here by error? <laughs> yeah, I just walked in and it just happened. <laughs> All right, let me see here. I'm just trying to pick up where we left off last time. I think we had a... Uh, we did the happy path and we did one one tiny validation uh, uh workflow and let me kind of take care of the a failing test or the second validation workflow uh, i still need to kind of see what what can be done in terms of so this is should throw validation exception let's see you don't have any code sitting on your side right you're good i don't believe so let me double check okay Nope, get get is happy. Okay, so let's let me sync up. Yeah, it, it looks like it's pulling something. Yeah, okay. So you did that part. Okay. Good. 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 Okay, so this is this is like that. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna write another test in here. And this test is gonna be like public void should throw validation exception on tokenize. If uh, O tokens is invalid, what that means is that that we do have an O token um, coming in, but the tokens themselves, you know, are not are not in good state, right? So basically, you know, the raw value is null, empty, or white space, or the uh the types are out of, are out of range you know and we haven't talked a lot about this i don't think we i don't think i i did talk about this before in terms of uh did i i did not okay i did not oh hi mark you know that movie joe familiar with that one maybe yeah <laughs> okay let's do this uh it's so, okay so if if raw value is invalid okay so here we go given given when then and then we want to go here and say you know here is your inline data need this to be a theory that's inline data with null empty or white space right and then string invalid raw value okay so now i want to go here and say okay here's a bunch of tokens you know so look at look at this guy look at this do you see this do you see what just happened yeah. i don't know i don't know what this is man that's this is i'm i'm also kind of heartbroken for people who watch us that after the community contributed all that stuff now it's not free anymore you know yeah so, uh, ten dollars a month yeah so which i mean if you're serious about using it as an assisting tool it's not a terrible price not terrible but still but there's a lot of people out there that i mean just getting in they don't have ten dollars a month <laughs> you know you know t you know ten dollars a month that can feed a whole family in certain countries so it's not that simple and i don't know if it's actually kind of i don't know if it's tailored towards you know uh basically people that are um like does it change the price like the can of coke a can of coke in in vietnam for instance is not exactly oh, like regional pricing yeah so they probably do you'd probably have to use a vpn or change some uh settings in your browser to see if it changes if you're say um let's say india or um lower income china or something like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um the other thing is if you're a student and you can prove it i believe it's free yeah for students it's for free that's for sure and i was hoping they would do something a little bit like what identity server did if you're just not that big help you out but if you're huge i mean ten dollars a month is nothing that's true that's true Okay, <clears throat> so we have OToken validation exception, and then this is my service. Pretty much the same, tokenize, uh, tokenize. 
and then uh, tokenize action. Okay, and this is invalid tokens. This is no tokens. This is no token. So if one of them is null, this is a null O token. Alt control shift left. How about that? Alt control shift left. It's it's quite a quite a journey to kind of do that, but uh, I've been using the the control and alt for word selection or line selection a lot more than I used to. <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, every now and then when I want to go select a word, it's not quite like solid in my head. I end up selecting till the end of the document. I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> I do like the um, the carrot position navigation that they have where you can keep click, clicking the back arrow in the, in the toolbar and jump between files. They're like, I know I was just Oh, there. you mean like this? Uh, it, it's actually up in your toolbar. It's the first left and right arrow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, right. That's, 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 that's control minus or control shift minus. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to touch the, the mouse. Touch the mouse. That means you're wasting your life. <laughs> I, I'm a combo user. I'll, I'll go between keyboard control. touch and mouse, depending on the, like if I'm on like an iPad with a keyboard, or, um, well, that's not a good one, but like a touchscreen laptop, you can use the mouse and touchscreen at the same time. Right, right. <laughs> so depending on what I'm doing, I'll get all multitasky on it. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Joe. Uh, C door and then uh, base. I think the correct pronunciation of your exception library is Zeption. Is that what it is? Because, you know, uh, an X and an E with nothing else, I think, is sounds like a Z. Yeah, but if you say Zeption, then it's not, you know what I mean? It's not yeah, it's Zeption but... anymore. Uh, you know, I, I was, I don't know who I was talking to the other day about this. I said, you know, where did I get this name exception? Oh, someone on my team, you know, someone on my team, you know, um, they said, where did you come up with that? And there is an album for Michael Jackson, it's called Escape. Yeah. Well, the other thing is extra, X-T-R-A. Look what he did. Look. Yeah. And I don't think he authorized that album either. That was released after he died. Right? Yes. Yeah. I I'm not even big on music or anything, but I saw this and I was like, oh, I can just say exception. And now if I do exception like this and just do it's search, like, yeah. it'll yeah. just bring only my library at the top right which is pretty cool right the sad thing is that google says oh did you misspell exception that's sad that makes me a little sad well, i mean <laughs> uh, you know what i mean uh see even the urban dictionary agrees exception is a shorter use of exception and probably the result of Twitter's 140 character limit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sorry, dude. Twitter's the cool. reason why we say Xmas. No. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I thought I thought that I thought the days of you know worrying about how many characters you're gonna be using are over. Like one of the reasons why I don't like SAP SAP is because you run into situations with this legacy, ancient, chaotic dinosaur system that, you know, would say, oh, sorry, we can't insert that name anymore because it's over 120 characters or over yeah. some. I'm like, yeah, the, the database limitations feed through through the implementation is typically yeah. what that is. There's no reason for it in today's world. Like, yeah, I'm like, who do you think you are? You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, something great happened with the exception library you know uh christo de tui went and upgraded the whole thing so now we have exception uh 2.5 which shows you like 2.5 now would simplify the experience massively so i'm gonna incorporate that of course in the why well, it's not showing me the 2.5 exception what 
you can hit the i don't know man why it uh, go, go to the go to the um the package url yeah i'm just gonna you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna go here do it old school i'm actually surprised that did did nougat just decide they don't want to make it on display or something here i don't know that one you published a few days back literally and i used yeah. it already i used it already so okay should uh see it's it's a lot easier to do it this way because i can go and say should be equivalent but let me just see what happened here this is a disaster uh go here um let me unload did they ban my library or something? am i uploading too probably much? i mean you're you're beginning to come become a problem i'm beginning to <laughs> Like this Hassan guy, we better we better uh, put a leash on him. Put, put, put a leash on this guy. Get that guy under control before. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna uninstall it completely. Click the nuget.org link up in the upper right too. I think that'll bring you to it. Nope, down down just up. Oh, upper, this? No, upper right. It's blue. Oh, this guy. Okay, yeah, let's go there. No, actually. Did it just bring up nougat.org? Why is it did I, did my library get banned? Is what the heck? Hold on. Um, you, I mean, you, you could go in the admin interface and look at the status. It, it may have um gotten flagged for a review or something. For whatever reason, I don't know. Hey, look at me. No way. Hold on. Uh, frameworks. How come I was not notified? Read me versions 2.4. Yeah, you go to manage package in the right hand side. You can look no uh, down. Um, there's different categories. So you got about, manage, and owners. Now you can go to listing 2.4. So see if you even have 2.5 in that select version. It's a drop down. Yep. Yeah. I don't think you do. You might want to. Dude, am I crazy? Hold on. I literally just used the library the other day. Hold on. There is my daily work, and two point four. I swear to God, I must be. Dude. Your restful sense. You just released a two point five version of it. I remember seeing that. No, someone left a comment and said, hey, if you use 2.5 there, if you are planning to upgrade to 2.5.0, I'm not crazy unless Mahdi is playing with me, you know. <laughs> okay, you know who's going to be telling me the truth? The source code. Yeah, you know? I was thinking, I was just waiting for you to go there. So, there release 2.4. 2.4. Nine days ago. You are crazy. You might want to get that looked at. It starts to fester after a while. <laughs> shut, shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it gets real weird looking. Man, that is a man, that is a mind game. I swear to God. This is maybe this is this is a sign I'm releasing way too much nougat packages. What is this guy talking about? The 2.5 guy in the comment section. Come on, bro. Okay. You <laughs> said for the next version. Because, like, you could choose to go to 2.7 if you want. Like, it doesn't have to be a linear next digit thing. No, no, I know that. That I know. Um. Oh, man, that that's weird. Just that's, messing with you. Yeah. I'm going to start doing that with you. Yeah, I'm. Don't do that. That's mean. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Should be equivalent to expected exception. Yeah, of course it will. And this is yeah exceptions assertions. Yeah, I I love Christo. Christo, he just changed things dramatically. And then I was working with this brother at work, and he even made it better. Like the value task. Said, why are you putting this kind of uh, function, funk kind of expression 
or value to it. Just throw the damn thing in there. And another another standard upgrade. Cristo yesterday was telling me, hey, Hassan, would you mind keeping a log of all the changes in the standard repo? Because we can't keep track of them anymore. Like, you keep changing things really fast. And we need to keep track. It's like a journal, yeah. right? So you know what was the latest thing that have been upgraded in the standard. You know, because I had to go back to the standard, upgrade everything. Like, all the exception handles. Yeah. It'd be almost nice if there's like a commit history or something. <laughs> there is, but <laughs> <laughs> no. But you you can actually you like any um you do a lot of PRs, so you can just basically have something that runs through all the closed PRs since the last release, and then uh, you can either do it time based or tag based. You can tag all your your things, um, and then compile it. I'm okay with that. Okay, I need, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I need this piece here. So let's see. This is Joe. This is projected tokens. Oh, and I, I don't need projected. I need O tokens. So let me pick up this. Say projected. Replace that with O. Pick. Done. And then I can go here and say, pull me the reference. Bring me Thanos. Okay, so there you go. And then we, here's a randomizer. And link. Uh, I need a feller. So where is the feller? Uh, there's yeah. a feller. Mm -hmm. And then we need a random number as well. Cool. There's also shuffling that, that goes on there. You weren't with me on that session, but I had to kind of shuffle the array. Okay, con Alt, Control, Shift. Yeah, I, I, I saw that video. I've used that implementation before. For, That's crazy, uh, dude. Like, who would think about that? Like, how would you even come about? The thing is, I'm a little bit stubborn. Like, if I see something... You just have to know about the equality implementation. It's, a, it's, one, it's zero or it's not. That's correct. Yeah. That's, yeah that's, so, that's correct. Uh, also, the other thing is, I'll tell you. The other thing is that I want to basically make sure that yeah, there is the object filler. There is a different randomizer that comes from another uh, another thing. Oh, uh, that randomizer is basically how I renamed the alias. That's right. There's no such a thing as randomizer. It's it's a thing that I had to make up. That's right. Yeah, some people um, get themselves into a hole like that. Yeah. <laughs> Not a hole, but like it, it throws you off if you, because the alien thing is more of a, um, not a complex thing. It's just you don't see it very often. I, I used to use it to, um, if you have two different libraries, mm -hmm. that are avoid the same library, yeah. but different versions, yep. you can alias them differently and use them both. Yep, I I agree. Um, I I I use it only because the word random and randomizer are uh, kind of ambiguous between two different libraries. So yeah. this is when I resolve to that, basically. Okay, here's here's a failing test for you. This guy is saying, "Hey, dude, if you have one token in that mix that's null, you should throw an exception. It's a circuit breaker, right?" So here's a failing test. <laughs> Excuse me, what? A fun. <clears throat> Run your tests in debug mode so you can skip that internal mock thing until we finish. Yeah. yeah, we should probably look at that at some point. I, I hope I hope we get the time to, yes. Because that solves a big problem too. Like, you know, you know an exception could occur, but you, there's no dependency that you can mock to pretend that this exception has happened. What are you going to do then, right? It's a very specific case for what I call a dead end services, you know, a service that doesn't have any dependencies. It does its own magic, right? Which is very yeah. common in libraries than services, but. I mean, we all take on dependencies from the framework that people don't like to um, think of as a dependency. Like you yeah. take on enter a string, they yeah. do their own thing. The only people that would give you a solution to that are 
uh the folks uh the 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 progress folks you know the telerik progress folks oh, yeah but but they want money from you yeah i mean you could you can do it yourself you end up creating um that's an object that has implicit com conversions yeah. Yeah. um and then you can then manage that as long as that uh let's say int wrapper or string wrapper uh is all your app uses now you have something you can test against but then you have to throw out all other data types you have to use something explicit for your domain or rewrite uh, the entity framework you could do that <laughs> entity framework is pretty testable you think so it's pretty testable i mean there's there's some things that they just because of complexity they just chose not to allow testable yep keep going uh, part of the test keep going this is okay it's because you're running it in debug mode which is which sucks yeah. but i think there's a toggle you can tell it not to break on exceptions but i like it just for the it, it, it's it's good see. except for this case where i'm like i need to get through this yeah yeah, wow, we sure, we sure have a lot of tests. Okay, so what did you get? Yep, that's the one failed test. Let's do it. Oops. <laughs> I got click happy. Now they're running again, jerks. Yeah, that guy right there. Right. Yeah. So we're looking to have this guy thrown that has a enter that guy. Wait, no. That's all we care. Oh, no, this guy. So enter that guy. Okay. And I lost my mind for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Should throw Nolo taken. any projected token is null if any o token is null, that's my bad do alt control no come on joe what are you doing you said hey i'll enter no 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 do alt control shift and then left or right there um, you go see but you your cursor was in the funny place there yeah. you go See? Oh, it's, yes, there you go. See? Don't, don't use the mouse. That's I did it. I did control dot. I, I know, but before. Oh, I just like moving it. Watching the little eye move around my screen, it makes me happy. I'm kidding. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Let me reread. Should throw validation exception if any O token is null. Yes. So we did if all of them are null, right? Now you need a new one. Now oh. So usually the the method name is like the 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 good action. So we want to continue if if it's not null. So if all of them are not null. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. My man. There you go. yep and there is a special exception this one is null o tokens this this one is null o token just on done now go handle it in the exception and don't forget to call that method see if see that validate o tokens 
Now you can call that one when you combine both methods, so it validates both. Okay. Um. Now, now we need to call that validate O tokens function, and we also need to handle that null O token exception. Yeah, I was just thinking about a crazy scenario here, but that's fine. What? Um, bas basically, if you have <coughs> all these, you can just throw these in an array and iterate over them. That way, you just keep adding the method name to the array. And you don't have to type a bunch of extra stuff over. You can also decorate them and have it discovered, too. Okay. Anyways. Wait a second. We're not calling this guy. Yeah, you have to call it. Well, last well, time you said I'll just call the one until we need it. Yeah, I, I think I'm remembering now. I'm like, yeah. wait a moment here. There we I go. tried. I tried to tell you. Well, Did no. Test-driven development. You don't code for the future. You code for now. That's, tr that's true. I agree. Now you just need to handle that exception. So go into that try and catch. And copy the block that handles O tokens and do one just like it without the S, basically. Done. Using my keyboard. You're using your mouse. Like a like a Yeah, I don't know words anymore. I became an adult and I don't use them correctly anymore. It's terrible. <laughs> All right, so I guess uh, we'll just build and run. Okay. <clears throat> Do the thing. So many exceptions. Yep. <laughs> Green. Perfect. Give me back that guy. I have no idea why you're still angry. Because you just ran. You're fine. Because I don't know what kind of machine you're running. It's a Dell. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Commit. Okay. Let's wrap up on validation. So you owe me a failing test that says if any of the values inside any of these tokens is null or empty string, we should throw invalid O token exception. So if you go to the test, here's a better test for you. If yeah. you go to the test and the projected tokens, that's exactly what you need. Do, do, do. Get out of here. <laughs> it's like file change that I click on. It's like, no, nah, I was just lying. <laughs> so go to the test. Yep, that's where they live. <laughs> just clicking all over the place. It was under tokens, tokenizations, right? Yeah, projected, projected tokens. Projected tokens. The only one I didn't open. Validations. If uh, that one at the very bottom. That guy. Take that guy as is, and just replace projected with O, and that's it. There you go. This guy. Yeah. Did I copy yet? No, I didn't. So down here. Yep, find and replace. Projected. Yeah, I'm just noticing you have some that are project as well. Ah, I see what you're doing. Nice. Okay. Make it case sensitive, though, so it doesn't ruin your... Uh, because you're still going to call a service. Yeah, that guy. Yep. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we'll just do all. None. You, you need the P to be uppercase. You and your logic. <laughs> all right. Now the rest I'll just do by hand. <laughs> token input valid. Oh, tokens, oh, tokens, oh, tokens. Raw, raw. Token project. Oh, tokens. Or tokenize action, you should probably call it. We're not using that service. Uh, tokenize action, yeah. Yeah. And then your service is called tokenization service. And the action is called to, yeah. So, so I know that the method is there, create random O token. So I'm not going to even, I'm not going to go there, but you need to create that exception, invalid O token. And we need to fix the, we need to fix the validation for the exception with the new standard. Yeah. Which is right here. Yes, sir. Pretty much the same. You can actually take the whole block from then to the bottom, and it will be exactly the same. From when to then. Yep, all of that. Take all of it. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Now, uh, expected O token validation. Um, okay. All right. So if it's null or empty, create random tokens does exist, even though it's yelling at me. Yeah, you just need the invalid O token va raw value exception. Oh, okay. Invalid token raw value exception should throw validation if any raw token. Nice. Why don't you just say if raw values is invalid? That works too. Okay. All right. Invalid raw data. That works. That works. This thing I need to make. That's true. Um, invalid projected token. Yeah, that's all I need to do. Cool. Where are we making that? Models, right? Yep. Models, O tokens, exceptions. There you go. Which one did we just make? Uh, invalid raw value exception. So I gotta make it here. Nope, that's the projected token. You wanna put it in the O tokens exceptions. Okay. Right, because it's the right model, right? Uh, I don't know. I was gonna put it next to the other one. <laughs> uh. Shoot, shooty McStappy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now we're good. Okay. Not really. You still have something to say for Jared. O token draw value. Let's go. Control K E add copyrights. Move on. And fix again. It's not a real world. Again. That's you, man. That's me. That's right. Yeah, it's from the other one. Where I don't even know where I got it from. From the raw to yeah, right here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. You should yeah. have a failing test now. Oh, I should have copied the thing. You could just do control period too. Do I? Let's yeah, see. go. Go to invalid uh, O token raw value exception. Do control period. Mm -hmm. Oh, how's that get added? Is there a file somewhere? If, if, if you make one file, automatically it will catch it for you. 
You don't have to create a That's file or anything. Right. Yes, sir. Build. It doesn't like something. That makes sense, though. Create random O tokens. What did I use up up there in the other method? Same one. Yeah, your your thing is broken. Yeah. Invalid projected. Oh, this could should be invalid O tokens. Yeah, that was one. Of the and ones also, I... also your expected should be expected O token validation exception. Like line 105. The same goes for the actual. Line 99. Yeah, I should have changed it there and then refactoring. Okay. Would help. All, right. All right. Run again. <clears throat> and now create random magically exists. Nope. It I does like it. exist. It just doesn't. Visual Studio being a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. Why is it doing that? That kind of bothers me a little. It's irksome. <laughs> irksome. <laughs> okay. Boom. Please fail. Yay. Yay. Send it over. Let's get this over with. What are you named? You're named this. Our tests are getting too long. That's good. That means we're making progress. All right. See what else I can ruin today. <laughs> All right. My side. <clears throat> Let's see here. You know, it would be nice if the StreamYard said who's sharing. I don't think it does. You know, it's it's just I, like, huh? I don't remember ever seeing anything, but I've also never hosted. You get more controls than I do. That's right. That's right. Uh, let's see. So let's do this. I think I have software on here that will do an overlay. Like it, it sits in between my webcam and StreamYard and uh -huh. it'll do overlays and stuff, but eh. Okay. <laughs> That's cool story, bro. <laughs> I'm happy I told it to someone. <laughs> I'm my life completely now. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So this guy here, uh, we basically want to go and say, this is a circuit breaker, right? So we can go here and say, um, uh, private static void validate uh, O tokens uh, uh, raw values, right? So here's my O token and here's a bunch of O tokens. And I'm gonna go here and say, oh my God. Um, is null or string dot empty? What do you think about that move? It won't like it because it's a jerk. It doesn't understand. It it wants constants. Like if I go and do this, it will be happy. See this? String dot empty is a runtime constant. It's not a constant. Oh, it's uh, it's not. You're right. It's a uh, yeah. You're sad. <laughs> anyway, here you go. So, we, so so the order of validation here is also interesting. Like you can't go to the next until you validate structurally that your component is in a good place, which which is great. Uh, let's see here. This is invalid uh, raw token. Okay. And by the way, there's I know that there's also a shortcut that would do lowercase, uppercase for you. I don't remember what it was. Like there's edit and then there is um, advanced. Oh, where you can toggle, yeah. Let's see. I know there's one here that says toggle line comment, incremental search, format document, control, control K, control F. Interesting. 
and then view white space. Ooh, control R, control W. Let's see, control I, R. My view white space is on by default, and I, I constantly know, I know. am doing control E, D, and R, G, which is basically what your K, L is, or whatever the one that you just said. Watch this, watch this. It's just oh. autopilot. I just do it. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see yep. it? Yeah, mine's got all that up, just on. Yeah, I sh I should. So if you go back to your um your your validation logic there, um. Oh, you got to use O token raw value. Okay. Am I too That's fast it. for you? <laughs> no, I I was um because you could you could basically just plug in a a funk there instead of having the whole thing written out. Good. You can go and say. Is you could basically just type is null or empty and yeah. have it generate it for you and then put your logic in that. Yes, sir. Uh... But it, it works better if your type that you're iterating over is what you're testing versus I mean, uh, like a property of it. Like this? Is yeah. And you can do string dot is null or empty. Watch this. Turned it from a funk to a, and now I can take this guy and literally put it in the bottom of the method. Yep. Like it's a function inside of a function. Yay. Okay, cool. It's null or empty. So now when people are reading, if O tokens, any of them is null or empty, then go ahead and freak out. Love it. Love it. So that's interesting. The compiler must scan the uh, the code. The whole, oh yeah, from a long time it, ago. It's kind of like um, JavaScript's lifting. Oh yeah, dude, from a long, long time ago. Yeah. So, so this is a pass. Now, you know what we can do next time, maybe Monday, is to basically go and say we want to handle the service exception, and that's it. There's no other exception. There's no dependencies. So we're just gonna use. You know what? While we're at it, let's do it, Joe. It's just one test, huh? What do you think? I don't care. Do you have, do you have a problem with that? No. Do you have Thank a problem, you. bro? Let's do that. I'm going to have to use internal mock this time. And uh, let's see. I want to copy this guy. Yeah, that wraps up the whole feature, by the way. So we can go into the next stage, which is create an orchestration service. You haven't done any orchestration services with me before, have you? Uh, no. Yeah, a little bit of fun. Spaces. They orchestrate, right? Yeah, they, 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 that's what I heard. <laughs> I heard. <laughs> Word on the street, they do orchestrate. <laughs> no coordination, though. No coordination. They just orchestrate. Just orchestrate. <laughs> okay, and this is a uh, uh, projected projection to tokenization. I'll take care of that. Uh, and then uh, let's see, what else am I missing? Just need a couple of exceptions. OK, let me do this. Let's go here and say failed O token service exception. All right, so that will be your public. Exception. <laughs> it's, it's been just got the, the the joke has been just running around for like <laughs> what is this guy talking about? You they, should when someone asks you next time, just make up a completely different word that's not even spelled. <laughs> How do you pronounce that? Well it's pronounced Fred. <laughs> okay, and inner exceptions. This guy's good. Is your guy done some done control K E? Oh, come on, what did it just open? What is that? Okay, control K E maximized one of your tool windows or something. You know, you'll you'll see this. I posted this on the old tech FTE uh, Facebook group. Uh, uh, Chrome was telling me I ran out of memory, and I'm like, You ran out of memory. I have 128 gigs of memory on this machine. You didn't you know, run this... out of your computer's memory. You ran out of Chrome's memory. Oh, 
And what is that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, .NET used to have a memory limitation. I think that's mostly gone now. Framework oh. was like, you're, you could only have like two megs of memory or something like that for a .NET app. Interesting. I look yeah. at it memory. That was old. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I think it has to do with like the actual VM or something like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. 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 Got it. Message. Uh, old token service error. Error. Third. Next support. Raise an inner exception. Then we want to go and say. So I noticed that some folks uh, actually do include logging. I might then add logging as well into my libraries. I, I don't have that habit. I have a habit of adding logging in my services, but not my libraries. I should so probably do that. The way I typically do it is I'll expose a, like a logger interface and then a either a null logger or a console logger internally. And then the uh, the consumer can say, hey, I, I also want you to use my logger too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tokenize some O tokens. Now this guy should freak out because it's going to go and find this validate O tokens, which is this guy. And it will try to, it will mock it, which is freaking magic, freaking magic. So it's it's a sad thing because the like you told me that the guy who invented the uh, the underlying library is his country is being destroyed every day. There you go, my friend. Yeah, there I is. found that on accident. It was just like a post that he had, and I'm like, oh wow. How crazy is that? Like, what are the chances? You know that you'll run into a situation like that. That's insane. That's insane. Okay, it uh, should be equivalent to. Uh, expected O token service exception, and I am blessed with this open source community and the standard community. These guys, these guys are awesome. Because every time now I do this, I'll remember um, the TUI. Okay, tokenization action O token service. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this, but. Uh, when I'm writing code, I do remember the people who taught me these things. Like, I have a good memory around that. I can remember people, you know, saying things. Okay, no exception was thrown is not a good thing because it should throw an exception. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what if I ran it in debug mode? If that works, I mean, we if, if you got a moment, we can take a quick look at the mock library. Yeah, we need to pause on that. Yeah, we definitely do. See, that's a good error. Do you see that error here? This yeah, here is saying yeah. exception of type. Yeah, it, it used to work, though. Something has changed. Either either the .NET folks changed something or uh, something happened. Tokenization. Uh, let's see. So this is, yeah, okay. Here's a failing test. But you're not compiling any different, right? You're just nope. choosing the test with debug. So it just yep. attaches a debugger. Like yep. it's not like you're like when you run in release mode, it actually removes the debug symbol. Nope. But they, they must be they must be there must be a setting that says remove debugging symbols or only my code when you're running in release. And that's why. I don't know. I forgot what mine was doing when I added it for that other library I did. Because we basically did the same thing in parallel. I, I went another yep. route. All right, my friend, your turn. Oh. Let's wrap up this, uh, this pull request. We can actually wrap it up today. Yay. A week and a half. <laughs> and you, you also had a trick to run debug without the exceptions flying. Was it control R T across the board? You did something. Oh, or it doesn't um stop at them. Yeah. 
Wow. There it is. RV, all tasks in view, RT is run, and then debug is, oh, you gotta let go of control. Control R can, and then T, control T. Yep, and then the other one's control, okay. control R, control T, okay. Let's do this it. This guy should throw service exception on, on tokenization as server er, service error occurs. That's correct. Where, where's my thing? Go to implementations. Control F12. Joe, drop, to... Joe, drop the session and come back. You turned into a robot. Like, you're like, ah, da, 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 da. your voice is just completely. <laughs> uh... All right. Hi, friend. Hi, how are you? Oh, much better. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. Yeah, sometimes I don't know what happens. Sometimes, you know, it gets it gets funny, funny looking. There you go. There we go, galaxy. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna catch a generic exception. No, 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 just an exception. The generic with the e. And I didn't hear you say exception. Sorry. Okay. Exception. That's right. Not using that uh, system. That Right. Call it exception for God's sake. What what is X? What is no, that? I learned wait, you from you still what? need you still need to localize it. So you still need to create a failed O token service exception and then pass that localized exception to your category exception. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, control R T right. Right. That should do the debugging okay. part. Yeah. The best ex extension I ever got. Play random. What does it do? If I hurt. <laughs> when there's a build failure. <laughs> All right, let's see. Run it and debug, like right click, debug that guy, let's see. Should do it. We know something, what's happening? There we go. Yep, it so did. It. It. Yep, run. Yeah, you, you broke you broke your uh, mock library. I don't know what you did. I, I didn't change anything. All right, let's create a PR. <clears throat> I actually want to try something first. Give, give it back to me. <laughs> hey, what do you think about... Let's see. You pushed it? Okay, cool. Um, what do you think about this? Well, I think it's well, nice. <laughs> come on. So, actually, I just, I just answered my own question. What I was going to do is that I was going to go and say, hey, if I can do this, that would be cool, but I still need that variable. Yeah, and so from a catch 
I don't know if you can use reflection or anything to like, you remember doing calm where you get like the global exception that you like the last exception that happened. I don't think you could do that. That would be nice if they had pattern matching. I don't know if they do. Oh, dude, I didn't know you could do that. Did you know that you could? Well, it, well, there's nothing. Well, you got to define right? exception. So I wonder if you do. Ha <laughs> ha. Because basically, these are almost considered independent code blocks. Yeah. I'm actually very heartbroken catch. that we can't do this, by the way. I would hope that we oh, could. Oh, catch it then goes to. Yeah, but, but look at this crazy. In due That's time, if, if, you, if you suggest it and you have a valid use case, uh -huh, they, uh -huh. they might implement it. I'll, I'll suggest it then. I'll suggest it. I mean, you know, if you could do this and get rid of the curly brackets where you basically have catch um, either a discard, just like a switch, right? Because that's basically yeah. a similar concept. Yeah. I would hope that I could do something like that. That would be really cool, Joe. Yeah. Okay, failed. Um, My library kind of does that. That's right. That's true. Uh, the, the I haven't touched it since our stream. <laughs> I kind of feel bad, bro. This is this I've is been doing so much stuff. I know you're busy. Uh, this is why I do a lot of like the libraries that I build. They're very very. Oh, can I actually make this static? Yeah, it should be happy because we're not calling anything. That's cool. Yeah, um, static since then. Yeah. So so I don't know if you saw this, but. I recently wrote a new library. Styles. Styles, right? You can. So I I turned CSS into C sharp code. Yeah. I was thinking about it the other day too. I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if you put a builder pattern around it. You know, some people are just. Some people told me to use source generator for it, and I like this builder pattern too. If Maybe. you hmm. you basically have to build um, a core that doesn't have much logic that just keeps track of what you're doing, and then a source generator based on whatever CSS exposes, if you if you can collect that information, and then you can actually make uh, um, context-based suggestions through through the builder pad. I think I think I think we we need to talk about this. I need to pick up your brain on this because um i i see a lot of potential see this is this is some pair programming right there fail yeah that's 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 what i pride myself with if i can if i can show people the history of how and look at this green red green red green red see see so that's that's my friend that's this driven development right there right it starts yeah. from the bottom works its way all the way to the top that makes me happy and through the commit um oh there's, there's a library, or not a library, a site that will actually, uh, almost like slides, go through your commit history. So you can actually see the history mm. in in a, a visible format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the first time I saw it was uh, our Dallas used it to display the evolution through a, a kata or something he did. Yeah. Oh, I was reading the Discord about someone was talking about um, NuGet and versioning. Yeah. So just like you build your uh, pipelines, you can make a library that generates a new spec from code. Ooh. How do you know? How did you know I build my pipeline and see? Oh, because we were building this project. Oh, that's right. There's a build project. Yeah, that's weird. Um, yeah, that's that's true. We have a we have a, you know I'm trying to kind of finish the release part. You should help me out with that. This is the yeah. build. I want to do the release, right? Anyway, I think this library is good. I think the next step for us is to build the orchestration service, and the orchestration service is going to be an interesting one because that's the one that's actually going to do all that magic. It would yeah. be nice to see. I'm sending in an OData query, and it comes from the other side as a bunch of O tokens. 
And now yeah. we can take these O tokens and turn them into expressions. Oh man, I'm excited about this. This is good. At some point, we're going to have to hand that over to some form of data access or, or whatnot, either it be an I enumerable of something or like, yeah, literally you could pass it to a, a JSON thing and have it yep. return you the stuff out of a file. Like it just doesn't matter what it has to go to from that point. It can yep. get orchestrated to um, five or six other of these services down the pipe. Yep. And that, then aggregate it. Ideally, it would be, it would be something like, let's see, what is this? Oh, this is me explaining how to make your code look ternary nice. Ternary operator? Yeah. That's how, I, that's how I, I've been doing that notation for the ternaries for years now. And it, it just looks nice. I've been, I've been try, like, the point of this is to basically tell pe people, like, when you write your code, your brain is not a text processor, it's image processor, right? So if your code has some shape and pattern into it, it's going to become a lot easier to read tremendous amount of code in a, a lot yeah. short period of time. But Our anyway, brains are hardwired to uh, recognize differences in patterns. Yes. And that's how I can detect issues in any code. Just my brain will go like, hmm, what is this, right? So, okay, so this is this is the O token orchestration service. And this is the one that's gonna receive uh, the data. So we have the, the uh, tokenization service, and then we have projection service, and then we have O tokenization service. And then you have in here O tokenization orchestration service. That's the one that you and I need to build next time. It's going to be super easy, you know, really, really easy because you're basically delegating the work. You're not doing anything. But the part that I wanted to tell you about is that we're going to sit in here and we're going to have something called O token serialization orchestration service. And this guy is going to have expression tree service. We're going to have SQL, uh, SQL service. And we're going to have uh, something like uh, maybe GraphQL service, whatever we want to put in there, right? So the request comes in, my friend, to a coordination service. The coordination service will go hand over the the client, right? And then it will go back and say, um, um, uh, um, um, uh, basically the 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 raw value is going to go in here, gets tokenized, and then it comes back here. And then based on the configuration, it will go and say, "Hey, give me an expression tree." That's the lambda expression. Right. So, so far, we're, we're, we, we basically 50% in for a horizontal pattern. Right. So, I think this is going to be exciting. This is going to be great. And then we're going to flip that pyramid upside down and just put a, a lake house, you know, and plug and play. Because now I'm not obliged to actually have a three or two dependencies to match the balance for the architecture. Oh, you're on mute. Um, you're going to want those dependencies to be fed in like the, 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 at yes. some point, like yes. you're not going to know what those are. You're just going to get their yep. interface. And so maybe, maybe at some point there's going to be a context that gets fed into the orchestration service. That way you're not, um, looking for those things yourself. That's why I need the lake house. Yeah. That will allow me to go and say inject something that fulfills this contract and and we should be good to go. Hey, by the way, congratulations. Yeah. We got it merged. This is yeah. this is great progress. Look at all this work. Great, great work. Um and, and just like just like this map is saying, this is where we stand. Ah, you forgot the copyright. Ugh. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's let's connect, create a code drop and add the copyright, and then let's connect on Monday. This orchestration service is going to be really easy. It's going to be the easiest what, thing in the world. What file was that? Oh, that was the uh, exceptions on the auto organization service. All right. Go have fun. Have a good weekend. Talk to you later. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate you. We were awesome. Bye.